Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing an overview of the protein synthesis project that I used to assign my students in my biology classes. Now if you're a teacher looking for ideas for a project to do after you teach the protein synthesis or DNA unit in your classes, this could be a great starting point for you. Or if you're a student looking for ideas for a unique biology project, you can keep watching as well. Now in this video, I'm going to go through the instructions that I would give my students for the project, some different examples of exemplars that students would create, and some tips for this project that I've learned throughout the years. Let's get started. So protein synthesis is one of my favorite topics to teach in biology because the central dogma really ties together so many different components of biology from molecular biology to DNA and genetics and even links to evolution down the road. And when it really clicks for students, it's really incredible. And so this project was a way for them to showcase their understanding of the entire process from transcription to translation within a cell. Now, as you can see from these images, I'm gonna put a few clips of students working on this project up on the screen as well. It's a very hands-on project Project, but there is an element of student choice as well, which I'll get into. I would usually devote several class period work days to this project, as well as encouraging students to add finishing touches at home. Students had the opportunity to work by themselves or within a group, though I did encourage group work for this project as it reinforced communication and collaboration, which was really important in my biology classes. At the end, there is a showcase element where students have to share their work with others, so I'll get to that as well too. This was one of my most popular projects. This is a survey that I did mid-year about all the different projects or major activities that we did at the end of units, and you can see by this purple 30% that the modeling protein synthesis project was one of the favorites year after year. So if you need to get a refresher on what protein synthesis is, I have some other video lessons that can help you on that. So be sure to subscribe to Last Surgeon's Lab so you don't miss out on any of my resources in life science or life lessons. So like I said, this would come at the end of our DNA and protein synthesis unit in classes. So the students have already learned about DNA structure and function, and we spent several days doing content background and exercises to reinforce their knowledge. And it's their turn to demonstrate how they understand protein synthesis in their own way. The very first thing we would do is create a plan for the project. So here's a copy of that document students would fill out and here are the basic instructions. Your objective is to create an accurate model or presentation of DNA, RNA, and proteins as well as the process of protein synthesis. You will use the main ideas obtained through our notes, videos, and class activities to design or model. Once your model is complete, you will write a paragraph describing your model and how it depicts protein synthesis in further, further detail. So not only are they building the model, but they're also saying what components of their model are representing what parts of protein synthesis, which I'll show you some examples of later. And then they had some options to create their model and presentation. They could create a performance illustrating DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. They could create a 3D model or a 2D moving model of DNA, RNA, and proteins depicting the process of protein synthesis, or create a video clip or animation using DNA, RNA, and proteins explaining the entire process of protein synthesis. They could work in groups of three or fewer and use any materials available in the classroom. And then if they needed outside resources, in addition to the classroom art materials that I had, like posters or cameras or candy, they had to arrange to have these materials brought in uh, and be available for project work days. Now, this project was graded on a rubric that was common to a lot of different subjects at the school. We were using a common assessment rubric at the time, but you could definitely co-opt this rubric for your own purposes or create an entirely new rubric if you wanted to. So the two main things they were assessed on was modeling, which was their actual physical model or presentation, and then precision, which was the paragraph or description of their model. And ideally, students would be earning a five, and, th and these were the criteria that they were shooting for. I'm not gonna get too heavily into this rubric because this was something that was used on a wider scale by the school, but you could definitely create your own grading criteria or your own rubric for this project as well. So after introducing the project and the rubric, I would go through the rules. So I would make sure they knew that it had to be 3D or moving. It could not just be a picture. I would show them some counter examples of student work from the past that I anonymized, and then we would actually go through and critique how it didn't meet the rules or the requirements of the project. Um, it obviously, it has to show correct information, so demonstrate a correct understanding of protein synthesis, and it must be completed with materials that they had access to. So if they wanted to create, for example, a candy model of protein synthesis, but they didn't have access to that candy or somebody in their group forgot to bring it in, then they would have to shift gears and create something else. I loved seeing the creativity of the students, and again, I'll show you some more clips of students working in the class with all the different materials and ideas. Some students would choose Legos or clay or computer models. I would allow my Minecraft 
protein synthesis models even in class. Um, but because they had significant class time to work on these, I could also go around and help scaffold their modeling ideas and help support their modeling ideas, giving guidance of what to focus on and making sure that they were moving in the right direction with their model creation. I had some pretty strict parameters for the group work, even though they could choose their own group members. If they had any problems, they would have to resolve those within their team. And we again had norms in my classroom for working in groups already set in place. And then individuals could work on this project as well, but they had to create a petition to work alone, which was a form they would fill out describing why and how they plan to get the work done on this project by themselves. So then I would go through a few exemplars to show the students just to give them some ideas of how a project like this could end up looking. This one I'll show you real quick is a video. It's not perfect, but it's a great starting point to show students ways that they can be creative with this project. Now, not everybody had to do a stop motion video. In fact, I discouraged people from doing a stop motion video just like this. I really encourage doing manipulative hand moving models where they would have to move the pieces of the model themselves in class on the day when we shared or coming up with some other creative ways. What I didn't want is just a slideshow or a static document where they had illustrated protein synthesis based off a picture from the internet. They had to have moving pieces or 3D components to show how they actually understood the process. I would allow students time for questions after I introduced the project, and then I would make sure there were scaffolds set in place for their work time. So they had six minutes to open the document, read through the instructions again, and brainstorm. And that was just them coming up with ideas on their own even before they went to talk to other people. Now, obviously at this point in time, they're making eyes at other students across the classroom and they kind of have an idea of who they want to work with, but I really wanted them to have time to have some personal individual brainstorm time before they started working in groups. So after that, I allowed them another six minutes to decide who they would be working with or to petition to work alone. And then they could start the planning of their project, which is the document that you just saw. They had to fill that out and create a plan for everything that they wanted to build before they actually got started. And then I would tell them when the showcase day was, which is the day where they're gonna show their models to the other students. So during project work time, I would make sure they had submitted that instructions and planning checkpoint, which is a document to me. I would approve those documents and then they would plan their model, gather any materials, materials and begin building. Then we would have designated work days in class for them to bring their model materials into school and work together as a team. I made sure that they discussed in their groups what they needed to bring, who was responsible for what, and what they planned on accomplishing the next day at the end of each work period. And of course, we did have a designated cleanup time as well. On a project work day, we would make sure that we went over all the do's and don'ts. So they were encouraged to sit with their group, work with materials that were available to them in the room, as well as the materials that they brought in on their own, and to be productive. And any student that was just sitting there and staring at their screen or not participating actively in the group, I would come over, I would address those issues, and they were not allowed to tell me that they were gonna work on it at home. They had to use their time in class productively. Now the work time in class was usually very vibrant. Again, I would be circulating among students, making sure that everybody had an active role in participating and building their models. And it was exciting to see how students would get ideas from one group and co-op them for their own, making for a very collaborative and creative process. At the end of each project work period, we would have a cleanup time and group ref reflection period, talking about additional materials they need, what they need to accomplish the following day, and then I had a form each person had to fill out where they did a sort of check-in about what they accomplished during that class period, if there were any interpersonal issues within their team or any questions they had for me that I wasn't able to address during the project work time. Again, we would have another day for this, a checkpoint for day three, and then there would be a few days gap before we actually had to turn in the project. So in the final product, they had to tell me what they made as far as their model goes. And then they also had to write their paragraph on an individual basis, describing all the components of their model and how it showed or demonstrated protein synthesis. On the day of the showcase, I would have separate the teams into two groups and I would put all the desks in a circle around the classroom. The sharing groups would sit on the outside of the circle and then the visitors would rotate on the inner part of the circle. And then I would set a timer and each group of students would rotate to see all of the presentations and models from the other groups of students. And the visitors were rotating on the inside of the circle and spending about two minutes at each station to examine the models, complete an evaluation sheet that I provide to them so where they had to check off certain evaluation criteria which helped them reflect on their own work as well as their peers and they would turn it in at the end of the period just to make sure that everybody was staying engaged during the share time. If any group had a larger presentation like a skit for example or a video that was longer than two minutes then we would allow separate class time for those parts of the showcase. 
During the wrap up of the project, they would have to complete their final peer evaluations and then make sure that everybody submitted their final product, which was that paragraph as well as the model materials. As far as what I did as a teacher, I would make sure I went and documented every model and then we had a safe place to store it so that I knew where I could look at it later when I was actually grading the physical models or if the students had a digital artifact to submit, I made sure I had access to those as they were turning those in. Now, once again, this is one of my favorite projects to assign and one of the students' favorite projects throughout the year. And there were some really fantastic models that ended up being built over the years where I ran this project. Let me know what questions you have about running a project similar to this and how you've encouraged creativity and collaboration in your biology classes. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.